Well, the visit of the Magi to the Holy Family in Bethlehem seems to come out of the blue. Matthew tells us that after Jesus was born, during the time of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? It just seems to happen. A star appears. But immediately there's great anxiety and disturbance. When Herod hears the news that a new king has been born, he and everyone in Jerusalem are deeply troubled. It sounds like a threat to Herod's leadership, a possible destabilisation of the situation for the Jews living under Roman occupation. So Herod finds out from the chief priest and the teachers of the law that where the Messiah is to be born and discovers that it will be in Bethlehem. So he sends the Magi to Bethlehem with instructions to make a careful search for the child on the pretext that he too may go and worship. An unlikely outcome, we can be sure. But God's revelation was not to be disrupted by the plans of human rulers. The Magi continue on their way and the star does lead them to Bethlehem, stopping over the place where the child was. Matthew tells us when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. There must have been a sense that the prophecies were coming true and that they, not Jews, but Gentiles, were being caught up in the culmination of this longed-for event. So when they come to the house and see the child with Mary, his mother, they bow down and worship him, presenting him with their treasures of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And then being warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they return to their own country by another route. And the great revelation, the great realisation in this epiphany moment is that Jesus is not simply the king of the Jews, as the Magi had expected, but he's the Messiah for the whole world, Christ too for the Gentiles whom the Magi represent. It was a huge shift of thinking, one which was to define the nature of the Christian church. And over the course of the history of the church, there have been other epiphany (coughs) moments, moments of great realisation and revelation. One of those comes in our reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians for this morning. Paul, or Saul as he was at the time, was systematically persecuting the church. It was an organised and planned attack coming from a depraved belief that he was doing God's will. Saul's epiphany moment, as we know, comes on the road to Damascus in a powerful encounter with the risen Jesus himself. And through that experience, Saul the persecutor becomes Paul the apostle, God's chosen instrument to bring the name of Jesus to the Gentiles and their kings. Maybe there's a hint here of the Magi, the first Gentile kings who worshipped the infant Jesus. And it was such a powerful event that the phrase a Damascus Road experience has come into common parlance and meaning meaning moments of such great realisation and revelation. So what of us today? Do epiphany moments still happen? Should we expect God to intervene in our lives and in our times? Have we any experience of God revealing himself to us, radically changing the course of our lives? Well, I guess we wouldn't be here today unless in some shape or form we've been aware of God's call on our lives. It may be buried in the depths of childhood, yet somehow has never left us. Maybe a moment when we simply knew that God was there, he was living and real. We may have become convinced of the truth of the gospel in a more rational way, so that we chose to become followers of Jesus. Or we may have had a powerful experience that stopped us in our tracks and changed us forever. Each of us is unique and God comes to us in the way that he has chosen. And those moments are wonderful, moments we treasure forever, full of the joy 
the Magi experienced when they found the Christ child. But we may have found, like Paul the Apostle, that God speaks most powerfully through painful and difficult experiences. C.S. Lewis wrote, Pain is God's megaphone to raise a sleeping world. It may be through experience of loss, of suffering, of deep distress, that we sense the Lord is speaking to us, making us aware of our sinfulness, calling us to a different way of life, to a new way of being. I've certainly had those experiences and continue to do so. They can be searing, agonising at times, yet also purifying and life-changing. If we can find the grace to respond with faith in those times, new possibilities, new hope opens up. The kingdom of God draws close. So today, on this Epiphany Sunday, I would encourage us to open our hearts and minds to the God who comes, as Carlo Caretto described him. Let's be willing today and in the year ahead to listen for his voice, to seek his presence, to open ourselves to the work of his spirit in our lives. Let's search for his meaning and purpose in times of great joy and also in the darkness of sin and suffering. And let's take courage from the words of Isaiah, Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.